Hello everybody, Chag Sameach. For this um, Pesach video, I wanted to try to explain my favorite thing about Pesach uh, through one of my favorite books. And so today we're going to read The Boy, the Kite and the Wind by Al Andrews. One day I saw a kite tangled in the high branches of a century old oak. Its long tattered tail flapped in the gentle breeze, a whisper of a much stronger wind that once carried it across the sky. I wondered about the boy who flew the kite and watched it lift higher and higher into a crisp, clear autumn sky. I wondered if the mystery of this wild and invisible force caused his heart to soar with hope and awe. I wondered if he was lifted too. And I wondered how long he wept when the towering tree, hiding and waiting, finally snatched his kite from the sky. I wondered why the father bought his boy the kite, when he knew full well that most kites end their days caught by the branches of some greedy old tree. In truth, I understand why he bought the boy the kite. He bought the boy the kite because the memory of the wind is stronger in the memory of the kite. He bought the boy the kite to show that the eternal wind will outlast anything that flies in it. He bought the boy the kite because one day the boy will have a son too, and the wind will blow. And his heart will need to soar. his heart will someday break. For the boy who had a son will love his son, who will love the wind as well. And one day he will be lifted too. The end. The book has a lot of beautiful imagery and things that we can take out of it. But the one thing I really want to focus on is the function of a kite. The book kind of calls into question why a parent would buy their child a kite when they know that most kites end their days caught in the branches of a tree. And that is because kites are beautiful, but they're not beautiful in and of themselves. No one buys a kite just to put it on their wall like you would a poster or a piece of art. What a kite's beauty is, it's a, its ability to show us the wind, to allow us to see something that we knew was always there, but without this tool, we can't see it, we can't tap into it. And that is, to me, exactly what Pesach is really all about. Pesach is about flying metaphoric kite. It's about finding things that take us through an experience in order to understand something that we couldn't without that physical experience. So take matzah, for example. Matzah isn't the most delicious of food. It tastes a little bit dry. It's not fantastic on your stomach. But when we eat matzah, we are able to immediately switch into the feeling of slavery and then gratitude for our own freedom. And of course, Judaism could just have said to us, we want all the Jews in the world to spend a week of their lives focusing on how amazing it is to be free. And I know for me that is really hard to do and wouldn't really be possible. The beauty of Pesach is it understands how important it is to link a physical, a physical action, flying a kite, eating a piece of matzah, with something intangible, the wind or the idea of freedom and slavery. And I think that what the set air in the Pesach situation is all really about, it's about flying kites, doing things that are physical in order to understand and internalize something that we really want to focus on, but we can't without those physical manifestations. So I hope that your Pesach is meaningful. And every time you find yourself flying a kite throughout this Pesach, whether it's drinking, uh, whether it's eating a piece of matzah, drinking wine, uh, dipping into salt water, eating bitter herbs, whatever that might be. I hope you're able to see that behind those actions is something really quite beautiful that Judaism is trying to help us to tap into. Chag Sameach.